tunnel vision inside Cause you're just not right Though it feels so right Maybe if these things were different Different from all So Oprah Winfrey once defined vulnerability as being willing to express the truth no matter what, the truth of who you are, the essence of what you are feeling at any given moment, is being able to open up your soul so that others can see their soul in yours. So when I first read that quote, it made me realize I'm not as vulnerable as I once felt like I was. And I say that because it's very specific with me. Like, I have times where I'm vulnerable with most things, and then with other things, I'm not. Or with certain emotions, I'm vulnerable with, and certain emotions, I'm not. So, Danielle, which is our guest today, <laughs> what is the areas in your life that you feel like you are most vulnerable? I'm actually a pretty transparent person. Like, I'm pretty open because I'm interested in people and I know like to be to connect with people you have to be vulnerable like you have to show them Agreed. who you are um, so I'm pretty open in all areas financially I may not be as open mm -hmm. to say I'm struggling <laughs> right or um, with God sometimes I'm mm -hmm. not honest with him mm -hmm. so it's like thank you Lord for seeing me and knowing <laughs> everything that I'm not saying to you right now right. Um, mm -hmm. so I think those are the two areas where I'm not pretty open but with people because I desire connection mm -hmm. I'm pretty open with people in other areas right okay Aaron well <laughs> um I want to be more open but I've struggled in the past I, I still kind of do struggle to this day with being vulnerable with people because um me and Martin talked a little bit about it um prior to to being here how you can only be truly vulnerable if you're comfortable. So with people that I don't know, like you guys, I'm, 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 I'm vulnerable. I can right. speak openly and, and have my feelings, emotions, and, and all that good stuff. But with other outside people, it's, it's tough because I'm like, I don't trust you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust you. You want me yeah. to, to, <laughs> to, to feel this way, or you want me to do this for you, or you want me to you expect things of me, but I don't trust you, you know? Okay. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough. And then being a, a business owner, I, I'm a personal trainer. So um, I gotta be vulnerable with my clients and they have right. to be vulnerable with me, but it's still a disconnect because I feel like, yeah, I don't know me. I'm just here to train you, right. but you want me to give my emotions and feelings to you. What about the business relationship, mm. you know? And I don't wanna mix business and pleasure and be 100% vulnerable with them. Right. So it's 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 a battle. Nah, that's understandable. Martin Lee, what about you? Uh, in the areas that I'm most vulnerable? Yes. Um, I think being in a place of leadership, mm -hmm. you have to be vulnerable, like by default. But there are some things I keep guarded right. because I think it's easy to lose credibility in people's eyes. Well, at least in your mind, you think you will just because of the fact if I'm struggling in a certain area, then that disqualifies me for leadership or that disqualifies right. me for being able to pour into someone. Like, um, like I'm a pretty goofy person, right? <laughs> and um, I, like to have, I like to have a good time. <laughs> right. So, yeah, but I also can be very serious. Mm -hmm. I'm a, like, you know, I'm really about my business. Um, so I can come off as a, a pretty open person, but there are certain things that I keep so guarded, you would have no idea. Right. You know, you mentioned like financially, okay. like, mm. You, we put on the front, like, oh, everything's good. Right. But the whole time, you look at that online mobile again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got $2. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do auto pay this time. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's certain things about, you know, having it together, you know, and if you don't have it together, people just count you off. And I think people always show off what they have put together, but the stuff that they right. don't have together, no one sees it. And I can say I can be a testament to that because there's certain parts of me that I just don't show people because if I do, what would you think of me? Right. I think the biggest obstacle in being vulnerable is being judged. No one wants to be judged. But see, I think with judgment, I think there's and see, 
People have this thing that they say where, you know, I don't judge. And I'm like, me, I do. I judge people. I think when people say that I don't judge, they're looking at the negative aspect of judgment. I think it's our God-given right to judge, which is why we have the ability to do so. But I think when people say, oh, I don't judge, like I said, they're focusing on the negative. But there's a good aspect to judging. I judge everybody when I first meet them with good intentions. Now, what you do after that is what is going to allow me to judge you with bad intentions. But at the end of the day, that's a basic survival instinct for me to do that because if you're doing something um, or you're saying something that I don't align with, and you might not even be saying anything that's bad, you know? I may have something going on with me personally and you just may do something that triggers it or whatever. I'm going to judge that with bad intentions because it's not speaking to me in a way that's either comfortable or that I like or you're being judgmental towards me in a negative way. So um, that also comes into play with being vulnerable, understanding the judgment of others. You have to be able to do that. I personally feel like it is necessary for us to judge people, which is why we're able to make the decisions that we make. I think the word judge has a negative connotation, though. Automatically. I think it's discernment. I think God it gives you discernment to know Same. this person I can rock with and this person. Mm -hmm. Not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Gotcha. I, I believe judging or being judgmental is uh, something that we do as people, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good thing because it, when you judge someone, you, you're saying that you have the power to put them in heaven or hell, good or bad. I could put bad over you if you do something bad, so I'm judging you now. Mm -hmm. I could put good over you, so I'm gonna put you on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And I think that we don't have the power to do that. We can have our feelings about people, but I believe that when, when, you, um, when you're meeting people, when you're being mm -hmm. vulnerable, you think the very least of them first and allow them to build it up. It's See, the opposite. See, <laughs> and but that's it's, it's one of those things where, and that's why with the word judgment, I think when people hear judgment because of the um, history of the word, when people hear it, it's a very intimidating word for most people. So when people hear judgment, it's automatically negative. It's an automatically negative word when people hear judge. Um, so I feel like in a nutshell, we're all saying the same thing. It's just how I'm using the word is not a word that y'all would use, but I use the word judge. I think for someone to judge any situation, there's one foundational piece, right? We need to have understanding, mm -hmm. you know, because if we have understanding, someone can be more open if you're willing to understand them. Because a lot of times people don't want to speak because they don't feel like they're going to be heard, mm -hmm. you know? And I think there's a lot of times it's like, I want to say I'm struggling, but the moment I say I'm struggling, y'all gonna come up with y'all judgments, opinions on me, mm -hmm. rather than just understanding where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. It's hard out here. <laughs> Gas is $4.99. And that's why it's very important when you meet people to not judge people with negative intentions, judge people with good intentions because of that reason. That's what I was saying. Okay. For that reason, when I first meet people, I judge everybody with good intention, everybody. Everybody is judged with good intention. I am open to receive you. And that's why I said, whatever you do after that, if you do something to me or whatever the case may be, then you're opening the door for me to judge you with bad, intention, and bad intentions or have that type of discernment. Mm -hmm. What about you know? going into, into the situation <laughs> and thinking the very least of them, and if they do something great, then you go, Check. <laughs> and then and you go to the next one, <laughs> next person. If they do you dirty, then you're like, oh, <laughs> I kind of really didn't even think anything of them, and you shake the dust off your hands. But then there's room for grace, you know, because that's, that's that grace. I think when we talk about vulnerability, mm -hmm. people are exposed, completely open, completely naked. No one's going to mm -hmm. walk around naked, but being vulnerable about your emotions, uh, about your mental state, mm -hmm. you know, because we just came out of a pandemic. I mean, we're still kind of in it, but... Literally. Right, but the ordinances <laughs> and stuff are loosening it up, but a lot of people have to face themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got and we were all able to relate on one thing. We are scared. We are uncertain. No one could front about that. Right. We had to be more open about it. And I think whether someone does good or bad, I think mm -hmm. we're so quick to label someone. Mm -hmm. But we don't know where exactly they're at mentally, um, financially, emotionally. And I think we need to open more spaces for people to be vulnerable. 
even if you disagree with it. Even yeah. if you disagree. Like right now, the fact that we're even having this conversation um, is a form of vulnerability because we're putting our opinions out there and we may agree or they may not agree with what we're talking about, but we're putting it out there for it to be talked about, to create the conversation, to create the perspective if someone doesn't have it. Um, I think in my life right now where I am struggling with vulnerability um, is dancing. So I'm an artist and I'm a dancer. And I have a lot of ways where I can dance, certain styles where I'm able to be vulnerable. And then there's other styles, for example, like contemporary, where it's very um, difficult for me to be vulnerable because in my opinion, when you're doing contemporary, you have to really feel those emotions, especially if you're doing it publicly. Now, when I'm at home and I'm in my living room, I'm good. What? I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm doing my thing. But publicly, that's different for me because contemporary is a style of dance that I've, I hold very close to my heart. Um, it's my language when I can't speak verbally. So that's where right now I'm struggling with vulnerability. I'm, um, I'm struggling with vulnerability right now with, um, just allowing myself to show up every single time as myself because of the simple fact um, I'm very um, outspoken. And a lot of the times when I say certain things, people don't receive it how I'm attempting to put it out. Um, and so I'm now practicing just literally just being like, they don't have to agree with it, they don't have to like it, but speak it. Speak it and be genuine and have good intentions with what you're saying, but whatever they receive, because depending on what level of vulnerability they're at, they're either gonna receive it with her ears or they're gonna receive it how I'm saying it. And that's just where I'm at with it with that. I don't think the world is ready to hear everyone's opinion all the time because of the structures in place. Like, we're in a world where we have to agree all the time. And people are super sensitive now. So whatever you say is like, oh, well, we don't agree with this. So we got to cancel that person. <laughs> yeah. like, cancel. The more vulnerable you are, the more open you are. Like, what you sound like, I'm like, OK, you sound like Kanye right now. You know, like, <laughs> you want to say what you're saying, but no one understands it. But we're still supposed to accept you, mm -hmm. you know? And we want to accept each other. We want mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. But the world is not really set up for us to do that. <laughs> So I was I, one of my clients. He's a uh, a um, dermatologist, and we were talking yesterday. I told him, well, I was being vulnerable with him about how I think that I'm being a little too vulnerable when it comes to my clients. My clients, they want to do whatever they want to do. I'm the trainer. I I tell you what workout to do, I'm and I tell captain. you, yeah, I, I'm the captain of that ship. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you what foods to eat. Why are you not listening? Why are you not following? And he was telling me how I need to be more uh, like stern with it. And I told him how there was a, a time where I had to tell a lady to go home. Yeah, because she <laughs> too uh, too emotional. She didn't. She wasn't ready to work out at the time, mm -hmm. and I had to tell her to go home. And that was like a one-time thing. I was like, oh shoot, I, I don't think I should do that again. But now I, I feel like I need to be more stern and, and a little bit less vulnerable. Because I'm like, hey everybody, I'm the trainer. Um, I'm open with you, be open with me, but I need to be more like, like less vulnerable, more stern, because when you're too vulnerable, you get stepped on. And, and people think that, okay, he's vulnerable. It, you're open, you're a little bit too open. Your guards are down, you're, you're a little relaxed. I feel like I can be um, uh, a lot uh, relaxed or very relaxed because it's, it's my business, you know? I can I can be easy, but when people think that it's easy, then they're gonna treat you how they want to treat you. Hmm. I mean, being vulnerable really means letting your guards down. All your defensive mechanisms, they're all down. Um, Daniel, what do you feel about being vulnerable? Like I said, I, that is literal. You cannot connect with people unless you are vulnerable. Like literally, in sociology, you learn. If you disclose, then people, like he said, you have to be comfortable to be vulnerable. So if I disclose to you, hey, I'm going through this or whatever, 
now I feel comfortable. Yeah, me too. Like, yeah. or my mom with that, or I can relate to that. So I feel like it's necessary. I feel like there's strength in vulnerability. Is that in everything? I think there's a difference between being vulnerable and being like oversharing. Mm -hmm. So so let's let's take a TMI. step back then. <laughs> so what would y'all say vulnerability is? Like what would y'all actually define vulnerability if you had to put it into one word, if you had to put it into a sentence or whatever, what would you say vulnerability is? So me, I feel like vulnerability is willingness. Um, willing to accept rejection, willing to, um, willing to take a chance, willing to sacrifice, willing to um, overcome shame. Mm. Um, so what would y'all say vulnerability is to you? For me, it would be, I'm not perfect and I don't have to be. Mm -hmm. And um, being vulnerable is also saying, I don't need your validation. <laughs> that part. <You're> not <laughs> I don't need your validation. I don't need you to tell me, oh, okay, Marty, that's good. We like right. that. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. You know, I can do something and y'all not like it. And I'm still be okay doing it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, there's, I'm not perfect either. Like, not everything right. I do is going to be perfect. Right. I would say leaving the floor open for whatever people have to say, let them say it, and not feeling any type of way. I, I, it's comparable to, and it just came to my, 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 uh, my mind, having a party, right? And it's your party, you have all of your friends, maybe some family members, some cousins or, or nieces, nephews, but it's your party, and it could be a high school party, college party, but you're inviting the, the goth kid with all black, blacked out eyes, you're inviting the, the kid that everybody picks on, and you're inviting a bully. And you're like, hey, my house is open. All of y'all come in. Because we're, we're here to have fun. So all of y'all come in. Right. And that's that's vulnerability. Yeah. I agree. I feel like it's just openness without certainty. Like, mm -hmm. regardless of how you perceive me, whatever judgment you have, whatever it is, however you're looking at me, I'm being open to show you who I am. Like, this is my soul. Right. My soul. What do you do if somebody, if you're, if you have your, if you are vulnerable and somebody violates? Then I feel like that's more of a reflection on them than it is me. Yeah. Um, and for a while, that was something that I did struggle with. Um, I would internalize what people was feeling based off of what I said or did. And now I'm realizing, especially when I know I'm doing it with good intentions or I'm saying it with good intentions, um, and it's factual, not opinionated. Even they know it's factual, because there's a difference. I can feel how I feel, but that don't mean that it's truth. That's just my truth. Right. But when it's actually true, and we both know it's true, but you're still choosing to um, take it as a, a negative when you know that whatever it is that's going on is indeed the truth, um, that's personal at that point. Like, that's something that you have to work through. That's something that you have to deal with. And a lot of the times, um, I realize with me, I always get told that I'm a mirror. My friend, she always tell me, Sev, you're a mirror. Like, you allow people to see themselves or whatever, whether y'all are just having a conversation or y'all are actually doing something or whatever. Like, you are literally a mirror. And I finally understood that because I come across so many people um, where I realize I make a lot of impact. And I didn't, I used to not realize how much impact I made with being vulnerable and being transparent. Um, so yeah, if they accept it or they internalize it in a negative way, that is very much so personal. Yeah, there's like that quote you mentioned, right? It's a, uh, I don't remember the quote exactly, but just being a, a mirror to the soul. And I think vulnerability is the access to our healing, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause Absolutely. Like they say, mm -hmm. a closed mouth can't get fed, but <clears throat> an open heart can't be healed, you know? That part. Yeah, because <laughs> if you are closed off mm -hmm. all the time, right? you'll never be able to open up to get healing. Just like with God, you mentioned something about faith, because that's something that hits me a lot. It's like, you don't come to God with it. You just assume that he knows, but he's like, 
if you don't open up to me. Confess. Just like if you're in a relationship, you know something's off. Right. Like, all right, when are you just gonna actually sit down and talk? We know something is off. I know you're upset about something. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Until you open up, there is no healing. There is no reflection of the soul. Okay. I can't see you. Right. I can't see you. No, I agree with that. And even with like business relationships, because there's a certain level of vulnerability um, that needs to be, you know, done when you have a business relationship with people. So being able, say for instance, they have a idea for a logo and they really like this logo, but then you're looking at the logo and you're like, I don't like it. <laughs> you not speaking up is an example of also, you're not being vulnerable. You're not being transparent with your business partner. If you are gossiping in the workplace, now you're literally, um, now you're literally preying on people's vulnerability at that point. So there has to be a certain level of vulnerability in the workplace um, and just in business relationships in general. So like, what's some examples that you guys have where um, you, were a you were either able to be vulnerable, and Aaron, you said with you training, you know, that with your clients, you realize it's not necessary for you to be as vulnerable in certain ways. But Danielle and Marlene, in what ways have you guys found yourselves um, being vulnerable in the workplace? I'm gonna let you take that one. <laughs> I mean, being a creative, I think innately that that's being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So with me doing art, like y'all are seeing What's what I could, yeah, what she's a painter, what, yeah. <laughs> so I paint. <laughs> um, you're seeing what I feel. So this piece right here, like That's I was right. at a place where I needed to take a breath, like I needed to reset. And I feel like that comes off in the canvas because that's how I felt. Like, mm -hmm. I'm literally giving my God-given talent and putting it out there to the world, whether you think it's beautiful or not. Right. Like, this is me, you know? Right. So bearing my soul in that way creatively, I'm vulnerable all the time. Right. That's why I think it's so easy for me to do it with people. Mm -hmm. um, because I I think people are good. <laughs> like, I, I just trust people innately. Like, I don't think, I, I don't think of them less before they give a check mark and then, oh, they've done this, so they've built up my trust. Like, I innately give you all my trust. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm giving it to you. What? Yes, I do. And that's, that can be naive at sometimes. So what they do with it after that. Yeah. That's reflection on them, like you mentioned. Exactly. Right. Reflection. Exactly. So I think with what I do innately, and all creatives, like whatever you do, any type of creative outlet, like you're putting yourself out there, what you think is cool, what, you know, how you feel, what you see, what your vision is, like that's only given to you. So when you put it out there to the world, that's, that's you being open. Right. No, and I'm sorry, Marley. I just have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's where the business aspect and the arts aspect clash sometimes with a lot of artists because while you work from a space of literally just being vulnerable with your art, um, you just made me realize where my struggle came in with being vulnerable when I dance, when I do contemporary because of the business aspect of it. I'm like, so normally when I dance, um, I have a more sensual movement feel to me with anything that I do. It doesn't matter what style that I do, but when I'm in that sensual energy, that, that. so that's a different energy and that's the energy that people, they're used to seeing with me um, versus when I actually do go and perform tonight and I'm doing contemporary, nobody is, they're, they're ignorant to that side of me. So, I think from a business standpoint, I'm like, oh, I hope that they receive this. But me just being me, I'm like, dang, I just want them to receive this as me, however it look, however it come out, whatever it is. So you just made me make that connection. But that's what vulnerability is. It literally is. You're able to see each other's soul in some type of way so that way we can receive that clarity. And the courage to put it out there. Exactly. The courage to be brave, like regardless of how they receive this, mm -hmm. like what, what feedback I'm gonna get. Mm -hmm. Like this is just me. So like if you accept me or love me mm -hmm. or want to be near me or want to connect with me, then accept what I'm giving you. Right. I think artists are the most vulnerable people on the planet, you know, because yes. um, <laughs> You know, Kendrick has just dropped, right? And he opens up a lot. Hey. 
He open he opens up so much that he opens up for us. <laughs> you know, for real? He's like, I'm gonna say what you scared to say. I'm gonna say what you scared to say, and he puts okay. it out there. And I think artists do a great job of that. But on the other hand of that, there's the people like me, right, that do like the corporate behind the desk kind of job. We don't get a chance to be vulnerable at all because we have to put up, especially black professionals. I'm speaking to I'm speaking to us. Oh. Black professionals, we have a hard time being vulnerable at times. You know prior to the whole Black Lives Matter movement because we have to be perfect. We have to be on point all the time. And when things aren't going well, you can't really speak up. Cause like, why are you being lazy? Why are you not this? Why are you not that? And it's just almost like, okay. When things hurt, you don't say it. When people say you need to work extra hours, you do it. You can't say, well, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm a little burnt out. <laughs> I need a mental break. Right. right. And I think now, you know, you know, the work environment is trying to implement these work-life balance and stuff, but, you know, I still think that's a fantasy. Uh, but it's not a space you really get to be vulnerable. We are all, like, we even have a voice that we have to use. Yeah. I got to use a different voice at work. Right. I definitely do. Because I'd, I'd be like, oh, we're on a call? Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, good, well, good morning, everyone. Morning. And it's just like, what is this? Where I can't even be right. myself. You get on the call. Yo, what up? What's going on? Yo, what's good, yo? <laughs> yo, how you doing, Diane? You good over there? <laughs> what's the weather like? But it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I cannot ever be myself in this environment, in this space. And it gets toxic to you internally yeah. because you start to question like, who am I? See, and that, Why do I keep showing up as this person that I don't really even feel comfortable? Martin, you seem a little urban today. <laughs> and that sucks. I feel like that's why people have a hard time being themselves. Like you would think that's the easiest thing to do. Just be you, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's simple. But no, like, okay, in the corporate world, I gotta stand up straight, talk with a certain voice. If I'm an influencer, I gotta make sure my stomach, you know, is mm -hmm. flat and doing this. like. People now in today's society are not themselves. Mm -hmm. And so right. there's a, a, a person that I present to you. Right. And then there's a me that is with me like right. all the time in my head. And then there's a me that only God knows mm -hmm. that I'm not even tapped into yet. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if people are truly just themselves, even though that sounds so easy to do, it's not. Like, that is literally being vulnerable. Like, even when I'm around certain artists that I'm intimidated by or, like, I love or I just look up to, like, I tense up. <laughs> like, you know, I try to be cool or right. let me dress a little bit more eclectic because that's what art is supposed to do, right. you know? But that's, that's a losing battle. Like, it's, when you're not who you were made to be, who God called you to be, right. that's an automatic L. Like, everything that you just said, like, that's where it starts, and that's where the mental health problems come in. That's where the anxiety yeah. come into play. Like, and a lot of the times, we have a hard time being vulnerable with ourselves. And mm. also being vulnerable is acceptance. You know, oh like you have to accept like <clears throat> this is where you are in your life. So even if you're not like fully open and like fully vulnerable, being vulnerable and taking the necessary steps to be that way is also accepting where you are. So that way you can continue to go further. Um, something you just said really triggered for me. Um, I'm going to be vulnerable with y'all for a minute. So uh, hopefully <laughs> let's put on our vulnerable you're caps. Safe. Hopefully y'all don't judge me. Um, <laughs> So, with good intentions. <laughs> oh, oh see, my God. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's, good intentions. it's not safe here. It's safe. Um, but there is something that I talked to my therapist about, which I feel comfortable talking about now because I was actually finally able to do the math. So, there was a period of time where I was going through a, I would say, like serial dating, like just one relationship after the other. And um, I never was able to go inside myself. And it even hurt my sisters, which I always felt, found kind of odd. I'm like, why y'all tripping about my relationships? Um, but I realized when my parents separated, I was suppressing a lot of pain. And the way I wanted to make up for it was just by trying to get in successful relationships or just going, it's, it's, just, it's a lot of dysfunction, you know? But I wasn't really into face myself. I thought I was okay. You know, I thought like, Psh, I'm fine. I find women attractive, women find me attractive. Duh, that's what it's supposed to be. All right. <laughs> the whole time, I was suppressing a lot of pain about my parents' separation 
because I grew up in a missionary family and our family was really tight because we did a lot of out of the ordinary things, you know, being on the mission field and doing the kind of work that we did and the things that I went through, things my sisters went through, my mother and father. So we did a lot of faith-based work and I loved my parents' relationship and dynamic because I literally felt like they were soulmates. I literally, they were the model relationship. That's what I wanted. Right. So when I saw that crumble, mm -hmm. a part of my world crumbled. And I almost thought, if they don't work out, right, nothing can work out, right? And deep inside, I put that like in a little corner. Like, nah, I think it's cool. So I got into college and I'm just going through it. And I'm going through these cycle, like these dead end relationships, not building a relationship with myself at all and not being vulnerable to myself. Right. And it got to a point where I'm just like, this hurts. This is too much because I'm carrying the weight of a hurt that I don't even know how to identify. I don't know how to talk to my mom and dad, be like, guys, you guys let me down. I don't know how to say that. Right. And I don't know how to come to me and say, bro, you let me down because you're devaluing yourself because you refuse to be vulnerable and open about something that... That doesn't really belong to you either. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I attached some... Now I've attached a hurt based on something that had nothing to do right. with me because my parents had their relationship. And because their relationship failed, doesn't mean that I can't have a successful one. Exactly. exactly. Um, but what it did lead to was because I suppressed that pain, because I wasn't willing to be vulnerable to myself mm -hmm. even, I was able to open up to other people. And as soon as something got was went wrong in a relationship, I left. Mm. I left because I didn't want to have to face that failure again. You didn't have that commitment. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I do believe that in order for you to be vulnerable with anyone else, you have to be fully confident mm -hmm. and fully comfortable, like you mentioned earlier, with yourself. You have to be. Mm. And sometimes that is hard to do. Yeah. Like, I'm in that space with myself right now. Like, total submission to God and to getting to know me. Because um, uh, recently... Uh-oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I had to take a... Whew, mm -hmm. Okay. Release. <laughs> right. So... <clears throat> I was in a abusive relationship, um, an ex actually uh, assaulted me, um, you know, dragging me around my apartment, choking me, you know, stabbing my paintings, holding a knife to me. Mm. And it was just like, you know, somebody that you love, that you've right. known for two years, you can't believe would do that to you. Right. Or like, how does it get here? You know? Right. And I blamed myself a lot for that, for not, like, after you get out of it, you know, you go through the whole domestic violence, you know, calls and therapy and stuff. Right. And they tell you all these different signs that were there from the beginning that I just, you know, wrote off mm -hmm. or didn't pay attention to. Um, and so it's like, why were you not strong enough to see that? Or why did you let him do that? Not once, not twice or three times, like, you know, going through that like as if nothing happened. Like the day that I met all of you actually mm -hmm. was the first time that it ever happened. And I just came to the meeting smiling, happy to, mm -hmm. you know, be a part of something different that. and new. Um, but that's how, that's how good God is though. Mm -hmm. Because of me going through that situation and knowing that I was letting go of a love um, of someone I really, really cared about, of hopes and dreams of a future that I had with this person like he gave me new people, mm -hmm. you know, to where I'm really walking in my path and, you know, doing things that I've never done like this, you know, being able to talk in front of people. And do, going through that, like I was in a place, like I said, of blaming myself to where I got so in my head about like, just not being able to take it. Flashbacks of, you know, different times where he assaulted me. Um, to where my mom had to come get me at like four in the morning because I just couldn't work it out myself. Like I was, I was imprisoned in my own head. Yeah. Um, but now sitting here today, I can say what I went through and right. I can be empathetic for him. And I'm in a process of forgiving him and forgiving myself. Right. Um, so it, being vulnerable and asking God to show me all of the, the places where I'm not healed, all of my bruised mm -hmm. places where 
you know, I need to submit to you or even just recognize so that they can be healed. Right. Like that's a very courageous process, but it's also like, I feel great. <laughs> you know, I feel mm -hmm. good doing that. I feel good being open enough to say, yeah, that Lifetime movie that I used to look at and be like, oh, that would never be me, was me. And wow. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that you bring up movies. Um, so uh, the Divine Messenger, that's his name on Instagram, the Divine Messenger, he actually broke down um, The Wizard of Oz on one of his statuses. And the way that he broke it down, I'm gonna do the best I can to break it down the way he did. But pretty much um, the yellow brick road represents Dorothy being on her spiritual journey. Um, and before I go into this, I should have known better because Michael Jackson ended up being in the movie. And I know one thing about Michael, he never touched anything that didn't have purpose to it. Um, so I should have known then that it had some type of like deep representation. Um, but the yellow brick road, um, from what Divine Messenger said, represents Dorothy on her spiritual journey. Um, Emerald City represents the heart chakra, which that is the stone for the heart, which is why it was green. Um, so the color of the chakra for the heart is green. So Emerald City is the heart chakra. So she's on her journey to Emerald City and she has all of the things with her necessary or the people with her necessary to help her complete her journey. So she had the scarecrow who needed a brain. She had the tin man who needed a heart. She had um, the lion who needed courage. Yeah. Um, and Toto, or was, that, was that the dog name? The dog, that was like her protector, her, um, her uh, consciousness, her, um, yeah. So pretty much she goes on the spiritual journey and she doesn't believe that she already has these things with her. They don't even believe that they have what they needed with her on the spiritual journey. They finally get to Oz and in a nutshell, Oz pretty much tells her like you have everything and he gives all of them everything that they came with or they, he made them realize what they already have. Yeah. So then um, they was finally ready to meet the Wicked Witch um, and whatnot and they was able to defeat her. The Wicked Witch represents society or our, um, or our subconscious mind that we attempt to run from. Um, those negative things that we attempt to run from, the vulnerability that we need to have with ourselves. Mm. Um, that's what the Wicked Witch represent. And then at the end of the movie, um, the Good Witch, I think her name was Isis, crazy. Um, the Good Witch, um, she asked Dorothy, she said, so um, pretty much when you're, when you're looking for love, it was something along the lines of when you're looking for love, um, what do you need to do or something like that. And Dorothy was like, look no further than my own backyard. So when he broke down that movie, I was like, whoa, yes. I never thought of that movie like that. Never. You know, and he did such a great job. So that in itself, you speaking on that, like that's your journey, you know, like you had the courage to leave. You allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to accept what happened and where yeah. you were um, and where you want to go, you know, and meeting us and us meeting you, you know, it takes a level of vulnerability, especially when you showed up to the meeting that day, the same day that that happened, and you were still able to put on a smiling face and not give us any of that energy of whatever you were feeling, you know? That's strength. That's, that's strength. That's strength. That's that strength. takes so much. So it's, it, it just takes a certain level of vulnerability. And, you know, I think all of us on our journey uh, with vulnerability, you know, there's going to be times where we're not so vulnerable and there's going to be things that we need from ourselves and things that we need from other people mm -hmm. to help get us there. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think me opening myself up to me, like being vulnerable with myself, allows me to be empathetic and even more open with mm -hmm. others. Mm. So, like it really does because now I realize okay what I went through it was necessary for me 
Mm -hmm. It was necessary for me to go through something that traumatic because I feel like God would told me several times during the relationship to leave. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like, no, I'm stuck and attached to this person. You know, mm -hmm. he looked good. We'll have these kind of kids, you know, you know? We'll, all of this good stuff <laughs> that I'm dreaming for myself. But sometimes God has to shake up some stuff what? for you to move. Read a slide. Um, so I appreciate that because now like how I move differently with everything. Like that has changed me completely. Like you giving me the compliment of you seem to be very efficient. That was like, oh, thank mm -hmm. you, because I'm a procrastinator. I'm not mm -hmm. so efficient, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I've been intentional every day to do something different, to be a better me, being that I could have lost my life. Right. So now I have to live, you know, every day with intention because I don't ever want to be back in that place. Live to live, not live to die. Yes. Okay. I feel that. Yeah, I feel like being more vulnerable right now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you open up your heart, you open up yourself for healing. Mm -hmm. I, I got one then. <laughs> I got <laughs> one. So I'm I'm not I'm I'm not from North Carolina, but I moved down here about eight years ago. And on my first Christmas down here, you know, it doesn't snow it doesn't it doesn't snow down here. So um I had got kicked out the house. Me and my brothers got kicked out the house because we uh threw a party. And my parents didn't know. I had my own car. My brothers were driving my parents' truck. We wound up getting kicked out. We slept at uh, one of my, my homeboys' uh, crib. And um, my parents were like, bring the car back. We brought the car back. On the way back to um, our house, because my mother was like, oh, I want you guys home for Christmas. And oh, I want you guys to come back and enjoy Christmas with the family. We, we're driving back. No one's on the road Christmas morning. No one's on the road. I'm driving my car. I had a, a 89 Riata with the digital dash and everything. Okay. It, was, it was smooth. <laughs> um, we're driving, driving, driving. There's a car in front of us. We're passing a school zone. The school zone is what, 35, 35 miles an hour? Yeah. The dude in front of me is going 15. I lied to you not. <laughs> so me, my sports car, nah. I pass him. I pass him. He follows me to the end of our our street. And I'm like, do y'all see that? He's, there's a car following us. There's no one else on the road. So we see the car turn when we turn, stop when we stop. We get to a stop sign. The guy gets out the car with a 45, yeah. a revolver, big, that's like that big, and puts it to my head. Mm. He was mad. He, he was mad. <laughs> yeah, he was mad. But it that situation was, it was so, traumatizing where being vulnerable was like vulnerable nah every conversation for me it doesn't matter how many weights i lift it doesn't matter how far i run how far i bike swim whatever there's no feeling that that's going to make me want to it, it, it's not going to help me to be able to open up um so for me the scariest thing right now that i'm trying to forgive myself of and heal from is having a conversation with someone who I don't know at all. And, and it's like, I don't know what, what, you're, what you want to do. You might have a gun on you. Or it might not even be that deep. It's just the fact that I don't know you, so I don't want to be vulnerable around you because I don't know you. And it's, it's the toughest thing because it plays back in my head. This person didn't look like he, he, he would have a gun, mm. but he got out the car with a gun. This person doesn't look like he... Hit the car he drives doesn't look like he's a violent person, mm -hmm. but he got out the car and put me in harm's way, and my life flashed before my eyes, and I was like, okay. All right, so now conversation after conversation, I have to tell myself, Aaron, it's okay. Right. Aaron, it's okay. Aaron, it's okay. Over and over again because of that one moment. And vulnerability, this is a, a touchy topic for me. Yeah. Like, to this day, I'm still learning to be more vulnerable mm -hmm. and being more open with, with people. And when people come into my gym, they're coming into my space. So yeah. I have to be vulnerable. It's like, you're coming into my house, you're coming into my house, and you're coming into my house. I'm not gonna be sh like shut off. It, it makes right. no sense because I'm welcoming you into my home. So now I have to learn to be more open all over again. I feel like somebody hit a reset button when it happened. And now I gotta do it all over again. Yeah. But it, it was rough. It was yeah, rough. Man, and uh, thanks for sharing that. That's, right. that's a very traumatizing event. Yeah. You know, and when people are hurt and when people are not willing to face themselves and not really take that time to heal, they hurt other people. 
innocently. Yeah. Facts. Because in that instant, that guy shut doors for millions of people that you will get to meet. Because mm -hmm. now your first instinct is, you're gonna hurt me. And um, it's, that's why we just need to be more open, being open to ourselves, being open to everyone around us so we can heal. Yeah, being brave because when you go through something traumatizing, it's like, I will never <laughs> right. ever again let that happen. You know, like I will never talk to that person or I'm gonna see that in everyone else. But like you said, when you do that, you close yourself off to so many blessings, mm -hmm. you know, so many opportunities um, because you literally need that to connect with people. Uh, so it's like you have to keep trucking through that, you know, that insecurity or uncertainty mm -hmm. or uncomfortable feeling mm -hmm. like being vulnerable. You have to truck. You have to just be brave, like push through it because it's at the end of the day, sometimes it's not even as bad as we think it's going to be, you know. So you never know, like, who, what people's stories are. So I went to um, Virginia for Mother's Day, and my mom was showing me people that she met, and she met this uh, lady. Um, and we were all just, you know, talking and having conversation. And um, she ended up telling us, like, how she was molested. And then her sister ended up telling us how, like, you know, she was in a domestic violence, you know, relationship. So it's like, you know, these people, you would never think that right. was their story. But, like, literally everyone has one. Right. And it's funny, you, it's funny you say that because um, I was watching a TED Talk, and I forgot the woman's name. But she said storytelling is just data with a soul. And I was like, oh, you are exactly right. Because a lot of the times, the way that we're able to help others is by simply telling our story. Yes. Whatever that story is, whatever that look like, whatever that feels like, we're able to now help someone figure out or learn what it is that they need to do. Um, and that comes back to um, religious texts. Um, it comes back to that as well. With religious texts, um, it's a book. So it is a book. And from that message in that book, you're gonna interpret it however is necessary for you. So of course you can have someone, a preacher or whatever religion it is that they focus on. You can have someone get on stage um, or I forgot the name of it, but you know what I'm saying? TED Talks? No, I'm okay, talking sorry. about like in church. Okay. They're doing a sermon or something. Um, you can have someone explain a scripture to you but at the same time, depending on what you are going through in that moment, that scripture may have a different message for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's the same thing as storytelling. Um, when somebody is speaking on something that happened with them, you're gonna receive that story different. If you're reading a book, you're gonna interpret it your own way. Um, so I think, you know, we just need to have grace with everyone. We need to be more open. Um, to just learning about people, however that may look like. And there may be things with people where we don't like what they're saying or we don't like what they're doing, we don't like what they're feeling, but they're at a specific place on their journey. And we may align with it or we may not align with it. And one day we may realign with them, mm -hmm. just depending on what that looked like. But everybody is on their own journey. And the first step, um, one of the first steps would be just being vulnerable. So from this day on, um, I'm gonna make sure I work more towards being vulnerable in very specific areas of my life. Cause in other areas, I got it down pat, I'm good, you know? But when it comes to my dancing, um, when it comes to me being, I'm an awesome mom, but it's always changed with children as they grow. So being vulnerable as my son continues to develop, um, there's just certain areas where I'm just gonna make sure I'm more vulnerable. All right. and. Um you know, just for a closing remark, I challenge everyone to be more open, to challenge yourself to <clears throat> heal. And being open with yourself, being open with others to help them process their healing. Mm -hmm. And um, cheers to you guys, you know. Let's go. For being open, for being vulnerable, and for healing. Mm -hmm. yes. Cheers. Much love. Salute.
tunnel vision inside Cause you're just not right Though it feels so right Maybe if these things were different Different 